It's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Hey, hey. Howdy. Here we are with differentiation, chapter number six in Higher Maths. It's quite a long chapter, this one, so I've split it into 13 lessons. And we're going to start off just with an introduction as to what differentiation is, some of the notation that we will use, and then just some basic examples. So, to start with, what is differentiation? Well, differentiation is a way of finding out the rate of change of one variable with respect to another. And we can use it across different areas in maths. For example, we could find out the gradient of a tangent to a curve at a certain point, or in other words, find out the gradient of a curve itself at a certain point. We could also find out stationary points on a curve, which is something we'll look at in a few lessons time. Or we could use it to find the velocity and acceleration of an object. A lot of the time you will see the phrase rate of change. If you see that phrase, rate of change, all it means is differentiate. I always think about rate of change, meaning how quickly something changes. For example, gradient would be how quickly uh, you're going up or down. Velocity, which is really just speed with a direction, is how quickly something is changing its distance from a point. And acceleration would be how quickly something is changing its speed. To differentiate or to find the derivative of a function, this is the notation that we will use, or it's some of the notation. So if we were given f of x equals 7x, if we differentiate it, we will get an answer of 7, which we'll see later on. But what we would do is instead of writing f of x, we would then write f dash x. So f dash x means the derivative of f of x. If we're given y, and on the other side we have an x, you would write down this, dy by dx. And if we're given k equals with m on the other side, you would write down dk by dm, Whoops, and that is how you would read it. What you will see here is that for the second and the third example, we are differentiating the subject. So remember when you change the subject, we change the subject to y, it's y equals. So we're differentiating the subject with respect to the letter that's on the other side. So here we're differentiating y, so we've got dy, and on the other side it's an x, so it's dy by dx. Here, the subject is k, so we're differentiating k, so it's dk, and on the other side, the letter we have is m, so it's dk by dm. As it says there, on the second, we're differentiating y with respect to x. What I'll do is I'll go into a wee bit more information about where differentiation comes from. You do not need to copy this down. This is just in case you're wondering where it's coming from. If you do have a genuine interest, if you're thinking about going on and doing further maths, if you're definitely going on to do advanced higher maths, you will need to know this. It is something that we cover in advanced higher maths. Or just if you're quite geeky, like Liam or Danielle or Sheldon, this is for you. So where does this come from? Well, if you take a point on a curve. So you've got point A, you've got the coordinate x, and this is your y value, f of x. If you have another point, we're calling it B, so you've got f x plus some other number, so x plus h. To work out the y value, you'd work out the f of x plus h. So really, in the on the x-axis, you have x, and then you're just adding some number on. This number, we're just going to call h, so you just add something onto it. Let's add in a tangent. So t is the tangent at point A. Let's say you wanted to work out the gradient of that tangent. Well, you couldn't really do it. But what you could always do is you could work out the gradient of the line between these two points. And what you will find, if I can draw on here, so that is the curve that we have got. If I draw on a tangent looking something like that. Okay, let's go with that point there. So if you've got another line drawn on looking something like that, obviously the gradient of the tangent and the gradient of this line between, say, two points 
looking at these two points. The gradient of the tangent, the gradient of the line here is totally different. However, what you'll notice is that if that point B gets closer to point A, so if you were moving that point B down towards that, this is just an exaggerated version, you will see that the gradient of the line between them is getting closer and closer to the gradient of that uh, tangent. So you can see there they're totally different, and there the gradients are becoming equal, almost. So as it says here, as H tends towards zero, in other words, as the points get closer together, as point B gets closer to A, then the gradient of AB will tend towards the gradient of the tangent at point A. What you will do then is if you wanted to work out the gradient of that tangent, you could work out the gradient of this line and you just use your formula y2 take y1 over x2 take x1 and that will really be as that distance h tends towards zero. If you do that, you end up getting this formula here. Using that formula, again, this is just if you have an interest. If you uh, don't, you could just skip to the next slide. Um, but if you did differentiate f of x, which is x squared, what you'll end up with using the formula is 2x. Or if you differentiate x cubed using the formula, you'd end up with 3x squared. This really is known as differentiation from first principles. It is something that you go over in advanced higher. But just now, what you need to really notice is that, well, to go from x squared to 2x, how do you do it? Or to go from x cubed to 3x squared, how do you do it? What you should be noticing is that all you do is you take the power and you bring it down to the front as here, as you've got here, and then you take one off the power. So the two goes to x to the power of one. So you'd have two x to the power of one. Here, if you bring the three down, you'd have three x. And if you take one off the power, you'd end up with three x squared. Really, that is true for any function that you would have. So this is the bit that you start needing to copy. Okay, there's a big green dot, so you should start copying from here. But to differentiate each uh, term, what you do is you multiply by the power and then you decrease the power by 1. For example, if you have f of x equals something x to the power of something or ax to the power of n, bring the n down, so you do n times a, and then you just take 1 off, so it'll be n minus 1. If you end up with just a number, so if you end up with a constant, for example, 5, if you differentiate that, well, then you just get 0. It's really because 5 you could write as 5x to the power of 0. So it's really 5 times 0, which is 0, and that would be x to the power of 0 take away 1. But because you're multiplying it by 0, you always get 0. So if it's constant, differentiate it, you get 0. I'll do a few examples of that then. So example number one, differentiate y equals 2x cubed plus 7. So first thing you want to think is we're differentiating y. On the other side, we have x. So you'd write down dy by dx equals. To do this, you want to do the 3 times the 2. So multiply by the power, which will give you 6. The x will stay as x, but we take 1 off the power. So instead of 3, it would go to the power of 2. Also, as it says there, 7 is a constant, and if you differentiate a constant, you would just get 0. So that there would just disappear, meaning that would be your answer. Yeah. Example number 2. Differentiate f of x equals x squared. Differentiating f of x gives you f dash x, and do the same thing again. So multiply by the power, so that's really 1x to the power of 2. So do the 2 times 1, which gives you 2. Then it'll be x to the power of, take 1 off the power, gives you 1. So it's 2x to the power of 1, and you don't even need to write the 1. So that's your answer. Example number 3. Find the derivative of 1 sixth x cubed plus 5. So doing the same thing again. If you find the derivative, it just means differentiate. And to differentiate, you multiply by the power. So we do the sixths times 3, which will give us 3 sixths. It then becomes x to the power of, take one off the power, so it becomes x squared. And 5 is a constant, so we just ignore it. That goes to 0. But if you end up with 3 sixths, we all know that becomes 1 half. So it's just a half x squared. And that's your answer. Number 4. Given f of x equals 4x to the power of 6 minus 7x, find f dash x. So again, just differentiate. So f dash x equals, do the same thing. 
So multiply by the power, so we do 4 times 6, which gives us 24. It would be x to the power of, remember, decrease the power by 1, which will give us 5. Take away, that there is 7x to the power of 1. So really you're doing 1 times 7, which will give you 7. And then x to the power of 0, x to the power of 0 is just 1, so it just disappears, leaving you with 7. Really, if you end up with something x, you just end up with the something. So here, minus 7x just becomes minus 7. You're just getting rid of the x. Next example, number 5, differentiate m equals 4g cubed plus 5g squared minus g plus 8. So here we're differentiating m, so it becomes dm over, and then on the other side, the other letter we have is g, so it's dm by dg equals... Do the same thing, multiply by the power. So 4 times 3 gives you 12. That will become g squared when you take 1 off the power. Multiply by the power for this term. So it's 2 times 5, which will give us 10. It's going to be g to the power of 1, which is just g. Minus g on its own. Well, if you think about g on its own, it means 1g. So the minus 1 times the 1 would just stay as minus 1. That would be g to the power of 0, which again just becomes 1. Again, if you've just got g or x, it just disappears, leaving you with the 1 or the number in front of it, the coefficient. And 8 is a constant, so that would just disappear. That would just become 0. Number 6. Differentiate f of x equals x plus 5 all squared. Think back two years ago, if you had x plus 5 all squared, what would you be asked to do with that? Yes, you would have to multiply out the brackets. So x plus 5 all squared means x plus 5 times x plus 5. Multiply out your brackets and you get x squared plus 10x plus 25. From here, we can now differentiate. So differentiating f of x gives us f dash x. If you differentiate x squared, multiply by the power, so 2 times 1 is 2, that would end up with, end up with x to the power of 1, and 10x would just end up as plus 10. Because 25 is a constant, there's no x uh, term involved really, that would just go to 0. Also, you may notice that I only have f dash x on the bottom line, and that is because we're only differentiating from the third uh, line to the fourth, from here to here. For these lines here, all we're doing is just multiplying out the brackets. After we get to this line, then we differentiate. Okay, so make sure you don't have f dash x before that. Example 6. Given f of x equals x to the power of 4 minus 5x, evaluate f dash 2. So to do that, again, differentiating, well, that becomes f dash x because we're differentiating f of x. If you differentiate that, 4 times 1 would give you 4. That would end up as x to the power of 3. If it's minus 5x, that would differentiate and become minus 5. So we've differentiated f of x. Now we can think about f dash 2. So to do that, we're replacing x with 2 in the derivative. So again, on the right-hand side, replace x with 2. If you do that, you can just start working that out. So 2 cubed will give you 8 times 4 is 32, then you take away 5, and you get 27. So, f dash 2 would equal 27. One more example, number 8. Find the gradient of y equals x cubed when x equals 5. So first thing you want to do is remember... Um, differentiation is used to find out the gradient. This is kind of a sneak peek at something that we'll be doing later on. But I did mention it on the first page. So if you differentiate here, differentiate y, you would end up with dy by dx. Because we're differentiating y. On the other side we have x. Differentiate, multiply by the power. So that becomes 3 times 1 is 3. That would end up as x to the power of 2. That's us differentiated. But we know that x equals 5. So we can then replace x with 5. So we end up with 3 times 5 squared. And if you work that out, 5 squared is 25, times it by 3 gives you 75. That is a quick introduction then to differentiation. Give these questions a shot, see how you go, and see if you can differentiate some simple functions. Good luck. Bye.